Hello, my name is Jim Burt, and today I'll demonstrate how to start with a mesquite log and turn that into coffee mug. This is uh, the coffee mug that I use every morning. So drink half a pot of coffee out of it every morning and give it a vigorous scrubbing in hot, soapy water every night, and it's held up really well. I made it in 2014. The only damage is to the finish where it scrapes on surfaces and where it's been rubbed from washing. Uh, other than that, the mug is, hold, is held up really well. And I'm surprised at how much I enjoy drinking from it every morning. The construction of the mug is pretty straightforward. First thing I do is turn a cup out of the log. And then I need to add a handle. And I have the option of carving the handle so it fits along this direction and fits along this direction and then do that again at the bottom but I don't much enjoy that kind of work so I've started using standard woodworking technique of using a mortise and tenon so I'll cut a mortise into the mug I form a tenon on the table saw that fits in here and then from that tenon carve the handle okay. so that gets me the cup the mug portion gets me the handle. The next thing I need to worry about is the finish. I want the finish to be able to withstand water. I need it to withstand thermal cycling where it goes from room temperature potentially up to boiling 212 and it needs to be food safe. Turns out epoxy fits that bill. A food safe epoxy will fit that bill. The last thing you can do is embellish the mug by laser burning, carving, wood burning, drill a hole, put a medallion, it's whatever you need to do. First thing I need to do is find the center. I'll use a homemade center finder. I'll avoid this knot. So these three marks intersect about there. I've got that center punched. I've already done the other side and then embedded the uh, four spurs for the drive center in it. Get that lined up. Pull up my tail stock. I want to make sure I'm turning as slow as I can. It's 500 RPM on this machine. Get the tool rest over here. And I'll start by taking this knot off. That's the part that's going to cause the most trouble. Verify that everything turns freely. I'm going to use a swept back bowl gouge to just start clearing this material off. inventory of where we are. I'm just now getting to the part where I can make everything flat. So I'm going to take this piece off and then turn the tenon. Keep this tool rest reasonably close. I have 
have a gauge, which is basically a nail stuck in the end of a piece of wood. And all that's going to do is get me close. Cut to that line. I'll use a large parting tool to clean that up. Okay, my caliper is confirmed that everything is okay. I'll just clean up this mess over here and we'll be done with this part. this you know, scroll chuck. Runs pretty good, but I can see that this hole is no longer running true. It's off a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is cut that flat so I can get another hole in there, another center point. Now I've got a blank securely mounted in the scroll truck. I've got the tail stock up for support. Now it's just time to knock the bark off of here. I'm going to speed the lathe up to 840 RPM to do that. I don't want to go too fast because this bark is liable to come off in big chunks. And sometimes if worms have gotten into the sapwood, there'll be a very large piece of bark come flying off of here and I don't want that to happen. So 840 is about as fast as I want to go right now. We're ready to turn the outside of the the coffee mug. So the first thing I want to do is set my calipers to a little bit over four inches and that's the outside diameter of the mug and just come in and make a couple marks. I turn a lot of logs and I have no idea what's inside this material. So 
before I get too carried away, I like to smooth the, smooth the outside and take a look at it. So here's a uh, scraping cut. Follow that with a series of shear scraping cuts. Let's see what kind of wood we have. I'm looking for any kind of damage or anything that I don't want to appear in that coffee cup. So I've got some worm damage here, but that may get cut out. More worm damage here. A really wild green pattern that I like. Double check. Okay, I'm going to get to take a sixteenth of an inch off going down from the four and eight that I set these calipers at to four. So I'm going to hope that I get this cut out. Let's try it. There's only one way to find out. So I'm ready to start turning the actual dimension. So I want four inches here. If I come out four and an eighth of an inch. Come out four and an eighth of an inch at this point. And that's the bottom of the mug. Okay. Halfway in between there. Right about there. That's the waist, the narrowest part. I'm going to set my calipers to three and a half inches and turn that waist and we'll just take a look to see what kind of wood we have. And I'm going to give myself a little bit over three and a half. I have a little bit of extra wood out here on the corners. I'll just mark the bottom. I just want to very, real gently shake this. See what it looks like. And I want to sneak up on this and just kind of get my shape. tend to do the final shaping with a shear scraping cut so I can just I look over the back side and eyeball that against the contrast with the table and just try to get a real smooth curve in here. Sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not. I'm going to round these edges over, do a final shaping. I can put a little bump right in here and I'm going to try to scrape that away and then I want to define this bottom. <laughs> This is ready for sanding. Now we're ready to start on the inside and to remove material quickly I'm just going to drill a depth, uh, drill a hole through there. I've got a spade bit one and three eighths inch. 
I have his distance set to a little less than no, it said at three and three quarter. Uh, a little bit less than three and three quarter. And that's the depth that three and three quarter is the depth that I need for the final depth of the mug. So I'm gonna stop just a little short of that. This side along this face, and when the edge of that tape lines up with the face of the wood turning, then I know I'm at the right depth. Okay, that's the first drilling I need to do. inch Forstner bit in here and I want to kind of estimate where three and three quarters of an inch would be there's three and three and three quarter so I'll probably stop when the front of these teeth hit the front of the wood turning I'll quit drilling so front of the teeth That's good. Now is a bad time to remove that drill bit because it's going to be smoking hot. So I'm going to just leave it in the chuck and let it sit for a while. This is a depth gauge set to three and three quarters of an inch. Then I need to go quarter inch deeper, but that'll give me room to clean up the bottom. So I'm happy with that. I've drilled to depth with a two inch diameter Forstner bit. If I had a three inch diameter bit, I'd go ahead and run that through there, but two is the largest I have. So I'm going to have to remove the rest of the material by hand. First thing I want to do is just give myself a mark. I want a quarter inch wall thickness and this should be five sixteenths of an inch from the outside wall. If I can mark it straight. So I'll just remove material until I'm close to that line and then I'll start measuring. The bearings on this lathe are shot. I've put it through some pretty rough times this last couple of months.
I'm good up to I don't know if the camera now the camera can't see it. I'm good to about right here. So I'm gonna keep doing the same thing. Uh, you notice I use a toothbrush to pull the shavings out of there. I've worked with a lot of wood that has knots and other things in there, and I've stuck my finger in here and had it catch me and jam against the tool rest, and I quit and poking my fingers in there a long time ago. getting to the point where I'm close to this bottom so I'm gonna to have to start flaring this back flaring the inside back out but I, I really don't want to flare it out and make a flat cut across here what I normally do is start flaring and then I'll round over and then I put a rounded bottom so I'm gonna alternate between cutting back in this region and deepening the bottom till I get to my target depth and then I'll just blend those two curves together Take the bottom back about a quarter inch. Okay, I'm to within a sixteenth inch of where I want to be at the bottom. And now I start cutting this wall back a little bit. And I stuck my finger in there when I shouldn't. This is where I need to be real careful because it's awkward for me working in this re in this region. I'm going to 
put a pencil mark where I'm good. So this is this pencil mark tells me that I'm good from from this area down to here. So I don't want to cut back this way. So I just keep removing material down in there. I have the camera where I normally put the light, so I'm having a hard time seeing in that corner. I'm guessing, and I'm guessing wrong about half the time. good to hear. I could take it a sixteenth of an inch deeper. I'll take it just a hair deeper, flatten the bottom just a little bit, and try to leave what I have in this corner alone. We'll see what happens. Finally have my light adjusted so I can see that corner. It makes a huge difference. I don't turn well when I can't see the tip of my tool. all I need to do. Calipers are hanging up here, but that's pretty close to where I want it to start rounding over. That's smooth. I'm going to call that good. That's about where I want it. The rest of it, I feel just a few waves in there that I can sand that out. So there it is.
Now that the inside and outside of the mug is turned, I'm ready to start sanding it. Uh, I used to sand by putting, you know, holding sandpaper, putting my hand inside there. and I just, I no longer enjoy doing that. It is too dangerous. So what I've done is I've taken a dowel, uh, embedded a quarter inch steel rod in that. I wrapped the rod in rubber bands. I wrapped shop towels around the rubber bands and I wrapped more rubber bands around the shop towel. And the rubber bands just give me a sticky surface, something non-slip non surface. And now I'll just wrap a rubber band around sandpaper. Now I can sand without ever putting my hand inside there. Set the lathe at 500 RPM. It feels pretty smooth. Now the grain is running along the axis of the lathe and I'm sanding across the grain. So I can pretty easily sand with the grain by doing this. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm ready to go. Here's the spot. Okay, I think I'm pretty much ready to go to the next grid on the inside. For the outside, I'll just unwrap this. Do the same thing. I'll sand it with the grain. Okay, it looks like I'm ready for the next grip. I'm not going to film the rest of it, but I'll sand this down until it's ready to cut off and then I'll start filming again. We're ready to cut the mug off the lathe now, so we'll get set up to do that. that down to about a quarter inch tenon. I go to a smaller tool that I can handle a little bit better. It's not quite long enough. get set up to reverse mount this and we'll be ready to go.
need to reverse mount the mug now and I don't have jaws big enough to hold it either from the inside or the outside so I've come up with an interesting way to do that uh, this is my version of a machinist step call step call it and basically it's a tube of six that I mounted between centers and I turned a tenon turned this round faced it off so the face is flat and then I cut two perpendicular curves in there and these curves will fit between the jaws. Let me get this in there. And as I tighten the scroll chuck, it will tighten the jaws on this step collet. Basically, it's a flexible jam chuck. So I'll put it in there just tight enough to hold it securely. Step my mug up there. And now I'll just put a pencil mark on the outside diameter of the mug. Transfer that mark all the way around. Okay. And now I want to hollow out the interior up to that mark so that my mug will fit in there. And as I tighten the scroll chuck, it'll tighten the step collet and hold the hold the mug in place. undercut that lip just a little bit. That'll give me a better grip on the mug. Let's see if that'll work. See how that runs. Okay, that runs true, so we're ready to turn the bottom. I had the mug reverse mounted and I'm ready to turn the bottom. First thing I want to do is bring up the tailstock for support. And the tool rest around. Take real light cut with a freshly sharpened tool when I'm doing this. That looks pretty good. Now I'm ready to remove the tail stock. Finish off the bottom. Just to be careful, I'm going to ride the heel of the tool and 
and swing around until I get the bevel where I want it. And that'll keep, if something does happen, it'll keep this mug from popping off. It's pretty flat. It's a little less than an eighth of an inch, but I'm happy with that. Okay, that's ready to sand. Now I need to attach a handle to the wood turning. In order to cut the tenon, I've got a router table. Underneath is a router with a square cut bit. I have a flat base with a runner on it. That runner rides inside the slot on the table. And I just raise that cutter up enough to just cut a slot all the way across here. That, by the way, is a 16 millimeter cutter, which is about 5 eighths of an inch. Okay. In order to get this to work, I'll set the mug in that slot and that'll hold it steady while I run run it over the cutter. In order to adjust the height of the cutter, I can look at it from this direction and raise and lower that cutter until I cut as deep into that mug as I want to. Okay. Let me get my hearing protection on. I'll get the bug damage pointing down. Make sure the cup is seated well, and then we're ready. Okay, and there's the vertical slot that I need. Okay, now it's on to the handle. And now it's time to cut the tenon to fit inside the mortise on that cup. I'll take another log cut from the same tree as the blank from which the cup was made. I'll take a hatchet and a shop hammer and split that in half. I'll take, take one half and put it on a table saw and cut it up and get a blank out of that, maybe a couple of them. And then I size that blank until it fits inside that mortise. From this, I'll trim that blank until I get a size that I like. From that, I'll pencil in and use a scroll saw to cut out the handle. Then I take a round over bit and soften those edges. But when I soften the edges, I don't come all the way to the end. I want to shape those after I glue the handle on. And the last thing I do at this stage is to file and sand and smooth everything up on the handle. So this represents the completed handle except for gluing it in place and then final shaping with small files and sandpaper so that this profile melts into the cup profile. Let's glue this handle on and we'll be done with this project. Take a little bit of tight bond too. Maybe a little too much right there. Use a toothpick, get it smeared around in that mortise. And 
getting a little sloppy on this one. Let's do the same on the tenon. down a couple of pieces of plastic so I don't glue the mug to the top of the lathe. Put that on pretty good. I want to clean some of the excess glue off. I'm not going to worry about getting all of it cleaned off because I'm going to sand where the cup and the handle meet. And kind of make a little bit of a mess out of this. Just as insurance, I'll hold that in place with the rubber band. I want to make sure I have this rubber band equally tied on both sides. There, there, there's a temptation to run your finger around it to get rid of all the twists and turns and whatnot. But if you do that, somewhere along the way, it'll make that handle flop over. So I just. Make sure I have equal pressure from both sides. Now I'm going to set that aside till tomorrow. Okay. One more thing we need to talk about, and that's what kind of finish do you want to put on this. And it all depends on what purpose is the mug for. My cup I want to drink out of every day, so I need a food safe, durable finish. And been using a product called Max CLR HP to high performance epoxy. When you buy it, the hardener will be clear. So this hardener is starting to go bad. It still it still hardens, but I don't trust it to be food safe necessarily. But this is what I have. And in order to mix small quantities, I use syringes. I got these at the farm and ranch store here in town. I'm assuming you can get them pretty much anywhere. And uh, for a cup of this size, for about a 12 ounce cup, I have a note that told me that I use four and a half cubic centimeters of total epoxy. And that'll kind of give you a ballpark idea of how much you need to get a thin layer on this. Typically what I do, is I'll coat several at a time. And I'll mix up a little bit more, maybe a lot more than I need. And I use to rest to finish off a project that's just been kicking around for a while. So before I start finishing my mug, I have a trivet or a bowl or a base that I want to coat with epoxy waiting. That way I can mix up more than I think I need and I have extra. But I've been using Tight Bond 2 as the glue to hold the handle on. Type on three would probably be better, but I have two. I've used it for years. I'm, I trust it. And I use an epoxy finish. There's a lot of epoxies out there that'll work. And it turns out, if you're not going to drink out of the mug, then you could use a spar of urethane. You could use shellac. It, it all depends on what you want to use the mug for. I'm really not prepared to talk about all the different finishes because I don't know what your mug is going to be used for.
Here's the com completed mug. All the woodworking is finished. I've sanded the top of the handle until it smoothly joins the top of the mug and then rounded over all these corners. Okay. Now there are a couple of points. Here you can see the the worm damage and I could fill that with wood glue and sawdust or epoxy and sawdust but I'm going to just leave it. It's part of the character of the wood. Now down here there's a gap in my mortise and tenon. I'm not quite sure what happened on this one but I'm going to fill that with wood glue and sawdust. I want to hide that mistake. Here's some more worm damage that I'm going to just leave. It's part of the character of the wood. If that kind of worm damage, damage bothers you, then you could always turn another sixteenth of an inch off this mug, and that would eliminate all the damage all the way around the mug. So if that's something you don't like, you just turn it away and make a slightly smaller mug. The blank from which I cut this mug did not have a crack in the bottom when I started. And in filming this video, I, I made two mugs out of the same blog, and both of them have an identical crack. And that's not uncommon. This one is pretty small for mesquite. Almost every mesquite mug that I turn has a crack in the bottom. It's also true that every time I've used CA glue and wood dust, to fill the crack, it has leaked somewhere along the way. It may take a little while, but it has always leaked, so I no longer do that. I suspect what's going on is the wood expands and contracts with temperature, and the CA glue is just too rigid. It, it's not flexible enough to follow the wood, and somewhere along the way, it's always going to crack. So, I've gone, I've used uh, wood glue and sawdust, and that, that's worked okay. But what I prefer to do is fill that hole with epoxy. And I'll put uh, I'll put several large drops of epoxy in there and let it flow down for a little while and then add more epoxy and keep adding epoxy. And then I take an air hose and cover the mug and give it a couple of shots of air. And I keep doing that until I have a a fairly large uh, drop of epoxy come through. I want to make sure that cavity is completely full of epoxy. Once I'm sure of that, then I'll wipe the epoxy off, put a piece of masking tape over it, flip it over, and then typically by then I can see where the epoxy is sunk, sunk down into the hole. I'll add more epoxy and just let it sit and slowly fill that gap. Let it sit overnight and fully harden. I'll sand it flush with the bottom and then I'll fill, then I'll uh, finish the coffee mug from there. And that's the best that I know right now. I forgot to mention that the wood that I used to make these two mugs was a, uh, I measured it to be 11 to 13 percent moisture content. And that's about the lowest I measure any of the mesquite in my shop. This has been around for several years, and it's it's completely dry. It's as dry as it's going to get in my shop, and it's hard as a rock. Okay. And it's important that the mug and the handle be at the same moisture content because they will move as they dry out. So it's really important that they be dry to start with and have very similar moisture contents. While I was filming the section on reverse mounting the mug, I used a step collet. Okay. I normally make these out of green mesquite so that they're highly flexible. And I do that because when I make the saw curves, I only leave a small amount of wood in here. And the mesquite has a tendency to crack, especially if the pith is anywhere nearby there. So to make these last longer to increase the safety, I use wood glue to attach a piece of used sandpaper. 
And the sandpaper I'm using has a pretty strong backing, so it's a pretty tough, pretty tough material to hold this together. So that makes it a little safer. And to make it safer still, I wrap at least two wraps of strapping tape around this thing. That way, if something does crack down here, one of these quadrants will not come flying out. Okay. Now, I like using this chuck because it's really quick. As soon as I get it in the lathe, I can turn whatever size I need to hold this particular cup. Then I take all of this off the lathe. I put another blank on. I turn a deeper, smaller hole. And I can hold this size cup. And I take this off the lathe and I'm ready to run another size. And I've had a lot of luck with these. The one I used during the filming was made out of a 2 by 6 And here the grain is running in this direction. I didn't think much about this, but when I turned the first mug, I tightened it down and I heard a pop. And this is what happened. I broke two of these quadrants off. Not across here where I'm accustomed to having it break. But it split in this direction. That means the only thing holding this on was the strapping tape. So I've learned two things from this. One of them is I'm not going to use this kind of material anymore. I'm always going to go in grain. I am also going to pay real close attention that if I hear or feel anything out of the normal, I'm not going to use it. I'll throw it away. Another way to check is once this cracks, it won't turn true anymore. And I've learned over time that any of these that are well made, and I number which jaw it goes into, when I put this back in the lathe, it will turn true. And if it doesn't, I need to find out why. So, as long as I'm careful, these have worked really well for me. And the only thing I have to be real careful of is making sure I don't have big chips inside these curves. Because if I do, they won't close uniformly. And my piece will wobble. So, if any time I'm using one of these, my workpiece wobbles, I stop and I find out why because it could be a severe safety issue. But uh, I think that pretty much covers everything I need to cover. I hope that if you choose to make one of these, that you have a lot of success and you, you enjoy your mug as much as I've enjoyed mine.